Welcome to part five in the 10 things you need to know about infrared win inspection windows webinar series. Uh, this webinar will go over a very important subject and probably one of the things we get asked the most, which is about field of view. You know, what can I actually see through an infrared window? So once you've decided um, what you need to see through the infrared window, you'll need to decide on the size of the IR window you require and where you're going to need to install it to get maximum efficiency. What you don't want to be doing is putting in oversized windows um, because obviously the larger the window, the more the cost. So this is very important to understand the size of the window required to just to see what you need to see. Now the formula for calculating the field of view of an infrared window is two times the tangent of half the angle times the distance. And that's the distance from the cover where you're putting the infrared window to um, the target that you want to see inside the cabinet. Now, typical infrared cameras have standard field of views of about 24 degrees in horizontal and 20 degrees in the vertical. And it's always advisable to uh, complete your calculations on a standard field of view uh, lens, even if you have a wide angle lens. Now, obviously, if your whole team is using wide angle lenses, then you can utilize that. But what you don't want to do is use calculations for wide angle lenses put the windows in for wide angle lenses and nobody's got a lens that will work from that window system. So as mentioned, the field of view is calculated from the distance from the cover in which the infrared window is fitted to the target that you want to see in target size, etc. becomes very important here. So when, you, when we calculate field of view, think of it like a triangle. So it comes back to a single point. And we call that um, a fixed field of view. Yeah? And so if you look at the uh, diagram here, you can see what we call D standard. If you see the small d, that's the distance. And it comes back to a triangle, a, a small cone. All right? So that's what the standard calculated field of view is. So this means that if you calculate a field of view of 2.8 inches, if you use a 2-inch infrared window, yeah, that will give you the ability to move the camera the apex of that camera two inches across the, the, the surface of the window, which actually would increase your D standard plus the IR window diameter to 4.8 inches. Moreover, if you use a four inch window, for instance, that would take your 2.8 inch standard and give you 6.8 inches. So this emphasizes why it's important to understand the functions of your camera lens, field of view, a number of infrared targets that you're looking at, camera depths, etc. Um, another point to mention in here is that if you think about it, your infrared camera lenses of, of the arrays on the camera are rectangular. They're not a, not a true square, although some, some of the lower end ones are. But, you know, if you look at a 320 by 240, that means it's 320 pixels across and 240 pixels high. So you'll actually have a different field of view in the vertical than you do in the horizontal. And you really need to consider that when looking at your calculations. So another important consideration is being the camera is manipulated. Okay, you don't just stick the camera up and you don't move it. You can actually move the camera left and right and up and down. And it's, this has the, the effect of, from our experiences of increasing the fixed field of view by a factor of three. So therefore, you know, the IR window calculation purposes, if your target is 12 inches across, you can reduce this to four inches on your calculations. And this will allow for additional area that has been you can see by manipulating your camera as I just mentioned. So looking at this animation, what we do is we're comparing, we're going to compare a 12 inch rectangular window against a four inch diameter window. So the, the image on the left is a cap 12, the image on the right is a four inch and you can see by moving the camera up and down we're taking full advantage of the area of the lens. Now the cap window has a much higher uh, it's about 50-60% uh, larger in the horizontal. And again, now if we put it, put it down on the vertical, obviously it's much larger in the vertical. So this shows the benefits of using large format infrared windows because we can extend a fixed field of view exponentially. And this is also very important because if you look at this, uh, this part of the animation now, you can see it's 6 inches, 12 inches and 18 inches. Obviously the distance will increase what you need to see. So when you put a large format infrared window in there, like the Cap 12 you see now, at shorter distances, we can see everything we need to see. So it's very important. So compare that now with the four inch and, and, and the Cap 12. You can see to see it's the same thing as the that Cap 12 can, you would need four or six four inch windows. 
So, another tip. A lot of people really don't like calculating field of view. So this is a, 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 a sort of thing we, we conduct in our infrared training classes where we physically measure the field of view by utilising what the camera can actually see. So what we do, we get a piece of paper and we put it on the desk, roughly two foot long, you know, typically a flip chart size works. We put the infrared camera at one end and we mark a datum point of two feet. On that then we will bring, bring a target in from the left and the right and as soon as we see those targets in the infrared lens, we mark the lines and then we draw in a cone. And this actually is the field of view cone of the infrared camera. Then we draw in datums at 6, 12 and 18. And now I have a field of view chart for, for my infrared camera. It's very easy to do. Then you know exactly what the camera can see with the lens system you have on there. And really takes the geometry out of it, which a lot more people trust this method than trying to calculate. Another, another very important thing to do is at this stage we have a thing called minimum focus distance. And what that means is how close you can get to a target without losing focus. Now, it, it, for thermography, focus is imperative. If we don't get our focus right, then the temperature measurements aren't worth anything. So this is an exercise that we can actually work out how close we can get to the camera without losing focus, and we write down a minimum focus distance. Now, some cameras have very, very poor minimum focus distance, 12, 14, 15, 16 inches even. Um, but most of the ones that our, you know, our clients use, clear flukes, etc., those cameras would have a focal distance anywhere from four to six or seven inches, depending on site. So very important, because you imagine if, you're, if your target is closer than your minimum focus distance, you're never going to be able to focus on it, and you're never going to be able to take a reading. So while you're doing this, take the time to work out that as well. So in summary, an infrared uh, window size and diameter should be larger than the eye camera lens. You don't want that ghosting or shadowing around the, the corner of the lens. And if your lens, if your window is larger, you can manipulate the camera left and right, up and down, and get a lot more um, field of view from the unit you're using. Every infrared camera has a field of view defined in degrees across the horizontal and vertical axis. axis. And it, this can vary depending on the lens used. So be very careful. Now, most filmographers will have a wide-angle lens. Wide-angle lenses are good because they do two things. It lets me see more in one image, and it actually has the ability of reducing that f um, the uh, minimum focus distance because you can get slightly closer. So if you do electrical filmography, a wide-angle lens is always worth having. Window field of view is, uh, what we call, uh, is the largest area that can be viewed through an IR window. So when you're making those calculations and adding your window sizes, etc., that window field of view is very important. Now remember, you can calculate that you can see everything within that panel, but there are internal obstacles that are going to cause you all sorts of problems. Cables, phase dividers, cabinets, uh, the actual physical construction of the cabinet. So although you might say, well, your calculations show you can use a three or four inch round window, you might have to use multiples because of the internal obstacles that are going to block the field of view that the camera can see. Okay, so be very, very careful uh, when, when doing that. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. Um, if there's any more information you'd like to know regarding field of view um, or any issues around you know, calculating field of view, please feel free to contact us at www.iris.com or indeed anything to do with any of the EMSD subjects we cover. Uh, we'll be more than happy to help you out.